This is a picture test in practical histology of the renal system. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video at the beginning of each slide and take your time in reading the question and coming up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to further comments and explanations. Name the three types of cells located in the encircled area and at which area A, B or C is the glomerular filter located. The encircled area is the glomerulus. It is a rounded structure formed of a tuft of capillaries. The glomerulus is surrounded by Bowman's capsule and together the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule are called the renal corpuscle. In the glomerulus, you would expect to find capillary endothelial cells because it's essentially formed of capillaries. Also, you find mesangial cells of the supporting mesangium, and the third type of cells are the podocytes. The mesangium is a specialized connective tissue consisting of mesangial cells and mesangial substance, which is an extracellular substance that provides support for the capillary loops. The mesangial cells are large cells that have phagocytic and contractile function. The podocytes invest the surface of the glomerular capillary loops that are exposed to the Bowman's space. So it is exactly located at position B. The podocytes, as their name indicates, they are cells that have an extensive branching cytoplasm that can only be seen in electron microscopy. As for the second part of the question, the glomerular filter is structurally formed by capillary endothelium, which is fenestrated to permit the passage of all non-cellular elements of the blood. The second structural component of the glomerular filter is the capillary basement membrane. Here, smaller molecules pass freely, whereas larger molecules are retained. The third component is formed by the podocytes, which envelop the glomerular capillaries. These podocytes, they have long cytoplasmic primary processes, which give rise to short secondary food processes, podo or pedicles, which interdigitate and are directly applied to the glomerular basement membrane. The gaps between the interdigitations of the secondary food processes of the podocytes are called the slit pores. They restrict the passage of large molecules Plasma from the glomerular capillaries filtrates into Bowman's space through capillary endothelium, capillary basement membrane, and the slit pores of the podocytes. Thus, the filter is located where the capillary tuft of the glomerulus borders the Bowman's capsule. And this is at location B. Let us also identify the other options to exclude them. A is the border between a proximal convoluted tubule and the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. C is where the juxtaglomerular apparatus is located between an afferent arteriole of the glomerulus and the distal convoluted tubule. Match each numbered profile shown in the photomicrograph with one lettered location on the kidney model. The photomicrograph shows a glomerulus, thus it represents part of the renal cortex, where we also expect to find more of the proximal and distal convoluted tubules. The circular profile number one is a proximal convoluted tubule. Such tubules reabsorb approximately 75% of the glomerular filtrate. The reabsorptive function is reflected in the structure of the epithelial lining. It is simple cuboidal epithelium with prominent brush border. The brush border increases the surface area of the plasma membrane for reabsorption of the glomerular filtrate. A brush border is a description of the light microscopic feature of microvilli that can only be seen in electron microscopy. The cytoplasm of the proximal convoluted tubule cells is deeply stained because of the 
high content of organelles, principally mitochondria. Mitochondria crowd the cytoplasm to supply the energy required for transport processes. Other cytoplasmic organelles also include pinocytotic vesicles and lysosomes, which reabsorb and degrade the small amounts of protein which have leaked through the glomerular ultrafilter. Compare the cytoplasmic stain of the profile number one, proximal convoluted tubule, and number two, profile number two, and note the deeply stained cytoplasm of the proximal convoluted tubule in one and in other profiles similar to one in the photomicrograph, like these. Since the proximal convoluted tubule is the longest and most convoluted part of the nephron, then it constitutes the bulk of the renal cortex, and its profiles are most abundant in this section. The proximal convoluted tubule is represented in the plastic model by A. Profile number two in the photomicrograph is a distal convoluted tubule. It may be differentiated from the nearby proximal convoluted tubules on the basis of the following characteristic features. First, the absence of a brush border, thus resulting in a larger, more clearly defined lumen. Also, you can notice that there are more nuclei seen in transverse section. Since the cells of the distal convoluted tubule are smaller than those of the proximal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule, as has been mentioned, has less affinity to cytoplasmic stains due to a smaller content of organelles if it is compared with the proximal convoluted tubule. And finally, sections of distal convoluted tubule are much less frequent than those of the proximal convoluted tubule because the distal convoluted tubule is a much shorter segment than the proximal convoluted tubule. Distal convoluted tubule number two thus matches with B in the plastic model. What special name is given to fibers A and epithelium B? Now both photomicrographs show abundance of muscle fibers in the wall of this structure. In the photomicrograph on the left, you can see that there is a transitional epithelium in the mucosal layer. This is in fact the wall of urinary bladder. The mucosa is thrown into folds in the relaxed state, as you can see here. And the mucosa, as elsewhere in the body, has a layer of lamina propria here. But deeper to that, there is an extensive muscular layer in the muscularis. This is formed of smooth muscles that are irregularly arranged into layers. The irregular arrangement allows mass contraction, resulting in emptying, but not peristalsis. These muscle fibers in the muscularis of the urinary bladder have a special name. They are called detrusor muscle. The third and outermost layer in the wall of the urinary bladder is shown in the photomicrograph on the right. It is the adventitia and it is formed of loose connective tissue. Collagen fibers, fibroblasts, there are blood vessels. In this section, the adventitia has an additional layer of flat epithelial cells called mesothelium. And this is seen only where the urinary bladder is covered by peritoneum. Keep in mind that in all serous membranes, such as the peritoneum, pericardium, or pleura, the mesothelium secretes the fluid and reduces friction between adjacent structures. The mesothelium here is clearly shown in B, simple squamous epithelium. Which of the regions 1 or 2 is represented by the photomicrograph on the right? The photomicrograph on the left shows a section of the kidney where one represents the renal cortex showing multiple renal corpuscles, whereas region number two is the medulla. Not all the medulla is shown, only the base of the medullary pyramid is shown here. Note that in the medulla, only tubules can be observed. The slide on the right shows multiple circular profiles of renal tubules. Some of the circular profiles have a very thin wall and are lined by simple squamous epithelium. They represent the thin limb 
of the loop of Henle. Many smaller profiles are also lined by simple squamous epithelium, representing the capillaries of the vasa recta that accompany the loop of Henle. Although no blood cells can be observed in their lumina, but their small size suggests that they are capillaries. In other sections, like this one, the presence of blood cells in the lumen confirms that it's a capillary, lined by simple squamous endothelial cells. The other profiles shown in the section on the right are lined by cuboidal epithelium and represent the thick limb of the loop of Henle. There is also abundance of collecting ducts. These are lined by cuboidal to tall cuboidal epithelium, whose cytoplasm is lightly stained. Lightly stained cytoplasm in comparison to the loop of Henle is a differential feature of the collecting duct. The presence of thick and thin limbs of the loop of Henle in addition to the collecting ducts, with the absence of glomeruli and profiles of proximal convoluted tubule, confirms that this slide represents region number two, that's to say the renal medulla. Name the organ from which the slide was prepared, list the component layers of its wall. This slide clearly shows a muscular tube. Look at the Lining epithelium, it's a transitional epithelium consisting of multiple cell layers. Now the presence of the transitional epithelium confirms that the structure belongs to the urinary passages, which are exclusively lined by transitional epithelium. For that reason, this transitional epithelium is also called urothelium. Note that the mucosa is thrown into folds, which is usual in the relaxed state allowing the tube to dilate during the passage of urine. The tube is the ureter. Note that the wall is formed by mucosa, represented by the epithelium, and lamina propria, a layer of dense irregular connective tissue, which is rich in collagen and elastic fibers. Then there is the muscularis, which is formed of two layers, an inner longitudinal and outer circular layer, in some sections, you might be able to see another outer longitudinal layer, especially if the section is present in the lower third of the ureter as it approaches the urinary bladder. This is not shown in this slide. Contraction of these smooth muscles results in the folding of mucosa and it creates the star-shaped appearance of the lumen. So now we have mentioned two layers, the mucosa, muscularis, and the third and outermost layer is the adventitia, which is made of loose connective tissue containing blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves. Name the organ from which the slide was prepared, and name two other structures lined by the same type of epithelium. In the photomicrograph on the left, you can see here a magnified view of the transitional epithelium of the mucosal layer. It's a stratified epithelium, which when relaxed, its surface epithelial cells are cuboidal and bulge into the lumen. So they are called dome-shaped cells, also called umbrella cells. The mucosa, as elsewhere in the body, has a layer of lamina propria made of dense irregular connective tissue. The presence of transitional epithelium suggests that the slide is prepared from a urinary passage. The extensive muscular layer in the muscularis, where the smooth muscle fibers have irregular arrangement to allow for mass contraction, suggests that the section is prepared from the urinary bladder. As for the second part of the question, other structures lined by the same type of epithelium, actually the excretory urinary passages, all of them, are lined by a similar transitional epithelium. That's why this epithelium is called urothelium, because it's exclusive to the excretory urinary passages. It begins in the minor calyces as two cell layers and increases as many as six or more layers in the empty bladder. It also lines the major calyx, renal pelvis, ureter, and 
most of the urethra, apart from, of course, as we have seen here, the urinary bladder. Identify the duct A, area B, lumen C, and region D. What is the type of epithelium in E? The section shows a renal papilla, represented in B. The renal papilla forms the apex of the medullary pyramid, where the base borders the cortex. The apex of the renal pyramid, or the papilla, projects into the caliceal space, which is shown here in C. To be specific, C is a minor calyx. The tubular structures marked by A are shown at the apex of the medullary pyramid. They are the ducts of Bellini. They are the largest of the collecting ducts that converge in the renal papilla to discharge urine into the pelvic caliceal space C. Note that the space C, the minor calyx, as elsewhere in the renal excretory passages, is lined by urinary transitional epithelium, marked by E, though it is thin here, about two cell layer thick. The wall of the calyx also contain a very thin layer of smooth muscle fibers. These contract to force urine into the ureter. D is a region outside the pelvic calyceal system and it shows abundance of fat cells. This is the fatty tissue of the renal sinus, which extends into the kidney from the perinephric fat.